So today I'm gonna to be building a 10 by 17 portable garage that I got from Harbor Freight. Now, for whoever's not familiar with this tent, it's great. It's very reasonably priced. I think you can get it for about $200. It's extremely sturdy. It can withstand incredible winds. I've been using them for years and I use it year round for storage. Now, the biggest problem I find, as with any tent, is trying to keep all the critters out. And I'm talking about things like raccoons, groundhogs, feral cats over the winter. Oh, they're the worst. They make a total mess. And snakes. And I mean a lot of snakes. So I've actually come up with a simple, very sturdy base or foundation. And I do it with pallets. So this is a pretty inexpensive way of building a base or foundation for your tent. But I do have to warn you, there's a fair amount of labor involved. But I think the biggest problem you're gonna find is trying to find enough uniform size skids or pallets to build a base. The pallets we'll be using for this project are two foot nine inches wide by three foot six inches long and five inches high. The goal is to build a stable base with a perimeter wall for the tent and frame to sit on and an opening on either one or both sides. So before you build your base or your foundation, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the area that you're building is as level as possible. Now you don't have to hire a professional, but just try to get as level as you can. Fill in any ditches or, and uh, just get it nice and smooth. Uh, let's assume that your area is nice and smooth if you're doing on a grassy area. Well, you want to remove all the grass and any growth underneath. Now, one of the things that I like to do is use uh, a heavy-duty tarp or ground cloth, and you'll want to get it uh, larger than the size of the base that you're going to be building. Now, remember, these pallets are made of wood, so you want to protect them as much as you can from rotting. If you put them directly on the ground, they're just going to rot away quicker. Now, I've actually had a tent, Harbor Freight tent, the same one in this area for like five years, and I just had pallets on the inside on the floor to protect all the, uh, all the storage items that I had. And they're in great shape. Now, water comes, washes through, and they get a little discolored on the bottom, but they don't rot away because the water will actually eventually evaporate. But if it's not so greatly leveled and you have some low spots, the water will pull up and it'll just take longer to dry up, more chances of rotting, and you'll get that nasty, musty smelling inside your tent. And none of us want that. Working with the two foot nine inch wide by three foot six inch long pallet that we showed you earlier, we will need 20 of them for this base. The overall size of the finished base will be 11 foot 0 inches wide by 17 foot 6 inches long. The base consists of four sets of what we call planks, two middle ones and two end ones. Building the middle planks. With five of the pallets, we will be assembling a 2 foot 9 inch wide by 17 foot 6 inch long plank you will need to build two of them. Building the end planks. With five of the same pallets, we will be assembling a two foot nine inch wide by 17 foot six inch long plank with an extra standard at the end, shown in the red. This will later add support for the weight of the perimeter wall. For the extra standard, we will just take apart one of our extra pallets. Take the extra standard and add it in between the top and bottom decks at about six and a half inches from the end of the pallet. Once we make five of the pallets, we will build an end plank two foot nine inches wide by 17 foot six inches long. We will need to build two of them now, um, as you can see, I've already started making all my planks. I have one more that I'm going to make, and I'm going to show you. Watch your step. I'm going to show you how to make the last one, but let me actually show you the individual ones so you get an actual visual of what it looks like. So this one's obviously the end plank. As you see, it's all bolted or nailed together, and it's uh, pretty sturdy. 
And um, as uh, I spoke about, the skids have the three standards and I added the one extra one. I just took a skid apart and slid it in there and nailed it in place. And that's uh, obviously to support the walls that are ultimately going to go around the perimeter of the tent. And to bolt them together, or to nail them together, I actually just got pieces of skids, cut them up, and they act as wooden blocks, and I just kind of slide them inside. Uh, I have my mallet. And then I'll nail them in. So you see, for these, I added several of them. And uh, that'll just uh, support each, uh, each skid put together. So let me get to them. So that's one end. We have the other one that we're going to build. And the two middle ones, you don't need the support in the center because uh, really it's not going to be having that much weight. The, the perimeter is going to carry most of the weight. But if you want to, if you want to add in for extra support, you can. But once we fill in all the slats, it's going to be pretty sturdy. And same thing, I have these pieces of uh, wood that I just kind of put in between and I nail them in place. You can use screws, but uh, uh, nailing is cheaper. So, and I'm really never going to take this apart. So, so that's a heavy. So we have our one end and our two middles. So now let me grab my tools and I'll show you how we make another end. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to put the planks together. And uh, it's pretty easy. Uh, it'll help if you have uh, somebody else helping you, but if you're doing it yourself, there's a couple little tricks to keep the skids together, or a pallet, as you're bolting them together. One is you can grab a clamp. So if you grab a clamp, let me just, uh, excuse me. And just uh, kind of line it up together. Whoop. You want to make sure the top is as uh, even as possible. Another little trick you can do that'll make sure that it's nice and straight is just get a regular flat plate or a piece of metal. Yeah, see if this gives me any problems. Okay, so once you uh, line it up perfectly together and you uh, it in it'll actually make it nice and flat so it's not going to go anywhere and perfectly level so from there you grab your mallet and just uh usually i'm working on the other side but i gotta be able to show it in the camera okay there you go So make sure, look, make sure the bottom is lined up. You can add them all in at the same time. Sometimes I just do one at a time. Because uh, the angle I'm in, I'm going to just do one for now. And since I have the flat plate, I can release that now. I'll uh, add this here. Okay. Then you have your framing nailer, or if you want to use screws, just the nailer goes so much quicker. Just give it another look, make sure it's lined up. I usually do two per side. And then, let me just, uh, there you go. There you can remove the flat plate. And if you want, like I said, you can, it's easier when you're working on the same side. I got a picture out for the video. Uh, same deal, just uh, kind of uh, work another one in. Once you get a hang of it, you build, you build these planks really quickly. Make sure it's lined up. Okay. 
There's one more. See if I can do this from this side. Huh? Look at that. Oh, because it's pretty much lined up already. Okay, that was actually a lot easier to demonstrate than I thought it would be. And as you can see, that's not going anywhere. Now obviously as it gets longer, it'll be a little more wavy, but that's okay. It'll stay straight, especially when they're all bolted together. So, okay, so I'm gonna continue on with this plank, finish the last two off, and then I'll show you how we bolt it together. Once all the planks are built, we will need to fasten them together to assemble the base. Okay, so once you have all your planks built, you're gonna want them bolt them together. Now, you're probably thinking, such a large area, how am I gonna be able to bolt them together? It's, it's actually really not that difficult. Let me uh, show you over here. Okay, so as you can see, I have my planks all laid out here. Now, what I do is, uh, to be able to bolt them together, I remove the slats in the middle of each, uh, each pallet. So as you can see, we have one pallet here, I remove those slats, we have one pallet here, I remove the slats in the middle. And that allow me to get inside with my drill, and I use a right angle drill, drill, I'll show you that in a minute. So I can drill straight across through both ends of the skids. And I like to use a half inch bolt. Uh, you can use something heavier obviously, but this is, uh, this is uh, more than strong enough. And um, washers on either end, as you can kind of see here, so that it'll uh, really lock the wood in tight. And I'll show you actually how to get the wood perfectly leveled and how to, how to get the, uh, the drill to go straight across to the other side. Let's go to the last one. Okay, so I had already bolted them all. This is our last one, as I said. So as you can see, there's a little gap in between the skids here. Now you can try to force them together. You can kind of hammer them. You don't want to be right on top of the skid, obviously, because you're going to put weight on one. So there's a couple of ways to do it. One, you can get a really good clamp. Try to get them together to close that gap. And uh, as you can see, the gap's closed. Now we have to get the wood perfectly level. It's actually not so difficult. Use a regular flat plate, a couple of screws, and you can start with either side. I like to start with the lower one, and then it'll make them perfectly level with each other. And then you can just make sure to get a little tighter. And I put the, you know, the penning you don't even need to put this many screws. Now, to drill across, you can use a regular drill. Actually, now that I got the flat plate on, I can kind of lean on a little bit. But I like to use a uh, right angle drill with a guide. And this is a pretty cool guide. Uh, I'm sure some of you have seen it before. It'll make sure it, uh, whoop. <laughs> it goes nice and straight. It's um, from Milescraft. Uh, we'll leave a link to it below. And what I'll do is I make sure, and I had to find the right size one that would fit in between my skids. So when I line it up, see, it lines up perfectly. As long as I keep the, uh, whoop, as long as I keep the plate square with the wood, Really not that difficult. Hope we can make that out. And what I'll do is I'll leave one washer in. Uh, help, get my hammer. Take the weight off of it. Knock it through. And I went with four inch. You can go a little longer depending on the size of your, on the thickness of your, the wood on your skids. And then you bolt it together. Now, you can do it the old fashioned way, two wrenches, but I'm gonna grab my pneumatic, one second. If you, if you have a pneumatic, make it easier on yourself. You don't wanna have to muscle this. You can take off the clamp now. One side, you can use a wrench to hold it. And the other side, whoop, just line it up. Ah, 
So if I look at it, the bolt's up nice and tight. That wood's not coming apart. And now the whole platform is level. I'll bring the camera around to show you. And then once you do that, just remove the flat plate. As you can see, nice and smooth. Nothing's getting caught because it's perfectly level. All right, so once you have, have them all bolted together, the real hard part comes to uh, building this platform. You gotta fill in all the gaps, make it a nice even wood floor. Now, when you uh, take apart skids, you're gonna have the slats, and um, depending on the si uh, how your skids are, you might be able to just fill them in between, but as you can see from mine, <laughs> it's uh, about, uh, about a, a little more than a quarter inch shorter. So what I'll have to do probably about 50, 60 times or so, is I'll have to run this through the table saw and get it to the perfect uh, width. Once I get it to the perfect width, I'll just come around with a stapler or nail gun, put them all in place, but when it's done, it's gonna have a nice smooth floor and then we'll get, get into the walls. So I'm gonna get started on that. Okay, so we have our platform all done and it, and it looks like a nice big dance floor and it, it's pretty level. It's a couple off spots, but that's okay. It's a supply tent. So what you're gonna wanna do now is start building out the walls. To make the perimeter wall, you will want to cut down a one foot section from a pallet. From a three foot six inch pallet, you will be able to make three sections. With pieces from spare pallets, we want to add them to the top and bottom of the wall between the standards. Once we have the wall sections framed out, we will add wood slats to one side of the wall. Wood slats are pieces of the top or bottom deck of the pallet. On the inside of the wall, add the wood slats to the top and to the bottom. This will leave an opening for us to fasten the wall to the base. Once all the walls are built, we will want to line them up around the perimeter of the base, five inches from either end. Okay, so once you've uh, built all your walls, then you can start laying them out on the platform. Now, um, I showed you on the plan how to lay them out. It might vary depending on the size of your pallets or skids, but uh, let's just follow the plan that we did. So we have them all laid out, then we fasten them to the, uh, to the platform. So I've pretty much done all these. I left a couple loose ones here. So let me show you how we fasten them. Okay, so like I said, I have these all fastened and as I'm laying them out, if you remember how I was showing you when I was building the walls, you leave this side open so you can get to the uh, two by fours that are on this side. So this side is totally closed off to keep the critters out. And this side you can get in with a nailer or screws. Now you, you can use any kind of fastener that you want. Um, I used to use screws, but uh, then it actually got too expensive. So I just started doing nails because I figured I'm not going to take this apart anytime soon. So because the way my, the way my pallets are, um, I have a five inch, uh, five inch uh, uh, space on the ends. So what I do is I cut some scrap piece of the two by four at five inches, and then I can actually lay them out and I know it's gonna all turn out perfect. So once it's laid out like that, then I can just actually nail everything together. So I'm gonna bring the camera around to show you how we fasten, it, fa fasten them to the, uh, to the platform. Okay, so uh, you wanna get them as close as you can. You got those little pieces of wood lining it up. Now, uh, I told you the, the floor is not gonna be perfect level. If yours is perfect level, that's great. Mine's slightly off, but that's okay. So you see how it's tight here and a little gap there. Well, it's all right. Ultimately, it's gonna be all nailed together. So you get a clamp, clamp them together. Now, this is where it depends on how big your, uh, 
um, uh, how big your inhaler is. Now, I've gotten used to having a large one like this to get it inside the gaps, but if you don't, if uh, that's just too tight for you again, you can use a palm nailer, which I'll show you that if you're not familiar, but remember to <laughs> wear your safety glasses. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna nail these two together. Then I can release this, get it out of the way. And the seam is nice and tight. There might be a little gap there, but that's okay. So now I'll just make sure that I didn't move these out of the way so that they're five inches from this. Then this is where that extra uh, support that I put in the bottom uh, comes into play. So I'll get inside and try to get the angle as close as I can, and that's going to be fine. Now, if it's just too tight for your, your, uh, your nailer, you can use a palm nailer. These are kind of cool tool. You don't use them all the time, but boy, when you have it, you're like, I'm so glad. <laughs> what it is, is if you're not familiar, it's a palm nail. You can get it. It's not too expensive. Pneumatic as well. Has a little magnet. You put a nail inside. Keeps it straight, and you just kind of go in there, line it up, and it just pushes it in. So uh, it's really kind of cool. It's a cool tool to have. Again, get in there, find where you want to go. There you go. Brings it all the way to the bottom. So just something to think about. Okay, so now I'm coming to the corner. I'm gonna turn the camera a little bit right here. So I'm gonna line up the corners. There's a little gap in the end. You just want to make sure it's even. Put the, the five inch block at the end. I know it's hard to see with the camera. I might want to bring the camera over a little bit more. Okay, whoop, what's this? So same deal. You want to hold these two corners together and at the edge, nail them together first. And that's it, those are nailed together. And if you really wanted to, you can kind of put one on the top at an angle. Okay, more fasteners the better. Just make sure it's lined up with the edge. Okay, same deal. Just uh, find the two by fours or the in the pallets. Try to get in here. So some are more tighter than others. Uh, this one's a little tight, so let me grab a couple of nails and I'll use the palm. Okay, so got the palm nailer. Got the one nail here. Put it there, find out where the uh, two by four is. Oh, that one went on a little bit of an angle. I think what happened is I put this one up a little too high, but that's okay, we'll get it squared away. Uh, find the two by four. Uh, definitely the problem. There we go. And we'll do one more over here to be safe. And I just actually take the nails from the, the framer, pull them apart. And that's it. This is totally fastened. Yep, I think it's good. Maybe we'll put one more nail in here, lower end. And that's it. Okay, so these are all fastened and we're going to be ready to put up the tent, for, uh, the tent frame. Now, you see the two openings on the side. We're going to build those doors out later. I'll explain those after we build the, the tent out. But for now, I'm going to uh, just follow the instructions on building the, t on building the frame of the tent for your Harbor Freight tent. And what you're going to want to do is try to get it on top of uh, the frame as you build. So once you build it, then you can slowly lift it. It's probably a two-person job. So I'll show you how we do that. Um, once we got the frame together.
All right, so we have the frame up, and as you saw, as uh, we were putting it, uh, putting it up, I kind of fastened down the corners, and let me show you. One of the beauty parts of the uh, Harbor Freight tent is it actually has spots, uh, holes already pre-drilled so that you can add fasteners. Now, I believe they're for the anchors if you're doing it into the ground, but what I like, since it's a large hole, let me just kind of pull it out to show you. I just use a washer so that the screw, whoops, sorry, so the screw doesn't fall through. So I put the washer, it's not going anywhere, and that's not going anywhere. Now you come over here, these as well. So now you can fasten each area, and, and I will later, but I just wanted to show you. So same thing, grab a smaller screw. There I used the long one, and I'll, uh, there you go, put it through. Line it up with the edge there. And that's not going anywhere. Let's do one more over here. Line it up as well. Grab a washer, small screw washer. You can see that on this side. That's it. This tent's not going anywhere. And trust me, it can survive some pretty, pretty strong winds. Now, <clears throat> There's uh, one thing of the Harbor Freight tent that I wish they'd, uh, they'd uh, add on to, or maybe an add-on kit. And the, the spacing of the frames here. It's actually a large spacing. I think it's close to five feet, which is fine. The tent will hold up fine. But in this area, in the Northeast, uh, we get snow. So the problem is when snow builds up on the tent, it can actually start caving in. So there's a couple of things that uh, we do. I actually have some extra poles and I attach them right in the middle to close the space down to like a little less than 30 inches. So I'm gonna get those poles together and show you what I mean. Okay, so I've added all the extra supports that I talked about. If you look up here, these uh, they are about 65 inches wide. So by putting an extra pole in the center on both sides, it's gonna allow when the snow, when snow or rain, it won't sink in these panels. If you check it out, got these all take, done. I got one more and I'll show you how it's done. Now, come over here, come over here. So the pole, I actually had uh, still, uh, I still, I had the leftover parts of a, uh, of one of these tents that was actually a, br uh, a big branch fell on it. So I kept all the parts. So I still had the same size poles, but uh, they're one and three A. So you can find these at Home Depot and just cut them to length. Now the fastener that I use, it's actually a T-mount, uh, a T-clamp, and it, you can uh, get them online or sometimes at Home Depot, it's part of uh, fencing. So what it is, and let me just kind of show you here. So if you see, it's made, they call it a T. It has uh, two parts to it. And then you obviously drill your hole in the pole. It comes with a bolt. Put it through on one end. Put it through on the other end. Whoop. Not that. Excuse me. And then it'll lock down in place and clamp. And the reason it's a T, because when the pole comes here, it makes a T. And I'm going to show you how we put it up. So have my wrench with me. Let's line this up. So you have to obviously take off the one end. Okay. Careful with the ladder. Okay. So once you get it up there, I'm gonna come around here so you can see. And I've already lined these all up. So you just want to get as uh, close to the center as possible. Obviously, they're going to be slightly offset. All right. So before I lock that down, what I have to do is line up the, line it up against the uh, outer part. So let me take this apart here. Bring the ladder close, come a little more on the side. Uh, have to 
wedge it in a little bit. There we go. Okay, so now I'll put this in place. Hold on one second, let me grab a measuring tape. All right, so, got my measuring tape. Just wanna make sure, oh, just wanna make sure this is lined up. Should be around 34 inches. Dead center, we're good. I'll drop this down. Okay, and now I can clamp this side down. Okay, now we'll come back to the center. Lock this in place. Oh. And, and that's it. These extra supports here are gonna make the difference when it starts snowing. And um, if you're in an area where it snows, it's gonna make all the difference uh, and it's gonna save the canopy. And uh, obviously when uh, using a tent, if you use this year round, you definitely want to, uh, whenever it starts snowing pretty bad, get a snow broom and uh, uh, a snow rake, a roof snow rake and pull all the all the snow off because you don't want it to uh to rest on it anyway but this will definitely help sorry so now the frame's done i think the last thing we have to do is the doors uh for either end okay so we got the frame up uh now what we'd want to do is finish the last part of the base and the last part would be the doorways on either side now you can close off one side the uh the harbor freight tent comes with a full panel door uh, with zippers on the side and on one side it's just a uh, closed wall uh, but you can actually order uh, an extra door if you want and you can access it from both sides and that's what I did I actually ordered one extra door so I can open it on either side for storage I don't have to <laughs> dig all the way through I can just go to one side or the other so I put the openings on both sides now the key to to the door it's not gonna be the, to your traditional door with hinges it's just a panel that you can remove that lines up with the uh, the base and what it is it's just you just want to grab some two by fours whatever you have some support and put one side you want to add the slats obviously so the animals can't come and the real key that i like to do and you can do a bunch of different you use pieces of wood or whatever i have i use flat plates because i have them laying around uh these flat plates on either end as supports now as stops rather excuse me so and this is a little tight and you kind of want it to be so once i put it in there see the flat plates lock it in place and it's not going to go anywhere and as animals animals will try to come they're going to try to push forward and they're not gonna they're not going to pull out towards you so uh, out towards the door so this is more than enough and it lines up with the rest of the um, rest of the base 